Hello and welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. In this video, we will talk, talk about MuleSoft cache scope and we will explain that how we can use uh, response caching in Mule 4 for an enhanced improvement for our Mule application. Here is a little more detail about the topics that we are going to cover in this video tutorial. First of all, we will have a theoretical overview of uh, Mule 4 cache scope where I will explain that how exactly caching works in Mule 4 and how we configure caching strategy and what are the different options available. And then I will take a simple use case uh, for a RESTful web service uh, and we will see that how we can implement caching and achieve the required uh, performance improvements. So if we talk about cache scope, uh, this is a scope available in Mule 4 which uh, greatly improves the performance because what happens is that we often come across uh, scenarios where we have uh, certain requests coming in in bulk or uh, in a great number of hits coming in uh, every minute but uh, the response remains same for example take the example that uh, we have some lookup data for example we have uh, data for country codes as we know that uh, the data for country codes are uh, data for uh, the country's uh, uh, country's names or country's capitals uh, like this these, these are kind of static data which, which don't change quite often. So uh, for this kind of data or for this kind of uh, use cases, uh, it's not a recommended approach that we hit the actual uh, REST web service or we hit the database every time. Rather, we need to go with a situation or we, we need to go with a scenario where we can cache this data and uh, respond to the clients whenever they're calling the service uh, in a way that uh, we reduce the overall uh, time that is required to process the request and that's possible using the caching strategies. So if we uh, use the caching uh, in Mule 4, then we have to configure the caching strategies. There are different caching strategies options available and uh, we have the default option of having an in-memory uh, data, data, data store or else we can uh, in-memory object store or we can have uh, our own object store. Depends on uh, whether what kind of uh, implementation or what kind of deployment we are going to have. If it's going to be a single node, then uh, we can go with the uh, in-memory object store, uh, where what will happen is that uh, it will be in the volatile uh, memory of that server. So all the request, uh, all the responses uh, specific to certain key value pairs will be cached in that uh, uh, in-memory uh, object store, and it and the request will be served from that. Uh, in memory cache but if you want to go with uh, some more advanced options and uh, for the distributed deployments we can go for uh, a separate uh, caching approach or caching strategies where we can have separate uh, object stores and then uh, we can configure uh, certain other parameters as well for example we can uh, specify uh, the invalidation time for our cache for example, uh, if we want that after every two hours, the cache data should be purged and uh, this cache uh, should be updated, we can have this time to live our expiration strategy configuration also configured for our, uh, our configuration in uh, Mule 4 cache scope. So now the use case, uh, let's talk about the use case that we are going to see in our demonstration. Uh, for this simple uh, video tutorial, uh, I will not be going with the distributed uh, deployment pattern or uh, the custom uh, object store. Rather, we will be going with the default in-memory in object store. And what we will do is that we will use the publicly available REST API, uh, which is available on JSON placeholder. And this API returns uh, user data. So what we will do is that uh, we will make the required configuration for our caching strategy and we will use a cache scope and uh, every request that comes into our uh, web service which will be based on an HTTP listener we will be uh, first calling the actual REST API from JSON placeholder to get the data and then subsequently what we will do is that every new request if it comes for the same key because uh, the data in the memory is saved in the hash map in the key in the form of key value pairs. So if the request is for the same key, we will be saving the data into the memory and uh, we will be serving uh, for that particular user from the uh, memory itself instead of calling the REST API again and again. Now let's jump into the actual implementation and see the things in real. I have already created a new Mule project in Anybody Studio with the name Caching Tutorial. 
So uh, let's first create a new flow. For that purpose, I will use HTTP listener because I want this flow to be initiated based on a HTTP call. Let's configure this HTTP listener. In the basic settings uh, for the connector configuration, I'll just click on this plus button. And uh, by default, it's set to localhost 8081. Let me just make a simple change to make it on 8082 and just click on OK. And for the path, I will use slash caching. Very simple. And then what I will do is that I will uh, use some loggers before the cache scope and after the cache scope just to show you and just to see in the console how things change with the cache. So the logger I have in my favorite. So I will just add a logger before the cache scope. And here I will just write a simple message before caching. And then after this, uh, I will make a request, an HTTP request. So I will add this HTTP request. And once I add this request, then I will have to configure this request and specify the uh, host port and the related details for the API that I'm going to call. For the configuration, I'll click on this plus button. And then here, what I'll do is that I'll specify the host and port. And the host that I will use is this JSON placeholder dot uh, type type code dot com. So if you see here slash users, this particular API gives us the data for the users. So if I specify any uh, particular user with the ID, I will get the response specifically for that user. Like if I specify three, now I'm getting a response for the user with ID three. Pretty simple. So let's just put the host and I will not put this HTTP, rather I just put the JSON placeholder dot com and the port because I'm using HTTP, I will use AD. And nothing else, I'll just click on OK. After that, I will have to make some uh, additional configurations here. For the path, if you see here, it is slash users slash something. So slash users slash I want to pass the ID in, which I will receive in the request. So what we want is that uh, we want to fetch the data for a specific user based on the user ID. So for that purpose, we will use user slash a URI parameter uh, ID. I need to specify this parameter over here in the URI parameters. Let me switch it to expression mode. I will make it ID and for the value, I will specify attributes dot URI params dot UID. So this UID will be the URI parameter that will be received by the HTTP listener. For this purpose, let me go to HTTP listener and here slash caching, caching slash I will specify in the curly brackets UID. So whatever UID we will be receiving, we will be uh, passing that to the HTTP request that is made to the JSON placeholder. So right now, what we have done is that we are just getting a request and we are passing it directly to the JSON placeholder without having any caching. So if we try to run it now, you will see that every time we call this service, the request is going to the JSON placeholder and the response is being fetched and it is returned, no matter if all of the requests are for the same ID. So let me run this project for now and we will see and then what we will do is that we will enhance this uh, uh, message flow and we will add the caching. It will take a bit of time to get it get loaded into the runtime and once it will be running we will be hitting it from the client. So we can see the status is deployed so now we can try to hit the service. So what I will do is that I will use the client. I am using the same client which is the browser. So what I will do is that I will just uh, write localhost call on 8082 slash caching slash four. So I want to return and get the data for the user with ID four. So if I hit it, uh, you can see it's taking time because it's calling the actual um, uh, JSON API from the JSON placeholder. So it, it took a time, a bit of time, and then we got the response and we got all the details for the user. So if I try another time, for the same user, we got the response for the same user, but both of the times it has uh, requested the data from the actual API. 
Now what we want to do is that we want to minimize the time that it takes for all the subsequent requests. If you see the logs, it's before caching. Actually, we have no caching right now. So now we are going to add the caching. So for the caching purpose, what we will do, we will add the cache scope. So let's add the cache scope over here. And this request that we are making to the JSON placeholder, I'm going to put it inside the cache scope. Okay, so once we add it into the cache scope, let me just add some additional things, which is some additional loggers. I will write here another logger and I will write uh, the payload here. So what I want to do is that first time, once when, whenever it will be fetching the data from the actual uh, backend API to a JSON placeholder API, it will be uh, putting the data, the in actual content, uh, actual payload into the console. And subsequently, whenever it will be, uh, this API will be invoked and the cache scope will be utilized, then it will not be uh, uh, putting this payload into the console. So I will add another logger just at the end outside the scope and I will write here after caching. All right. So now if you see on this caching, uh, we did not add any new thing uh, for the caching strategy. So here you can see we have options. Use default caching strategy or reference to a strategy. So what I want to do, I want to reference to a strategy and I want to click on this plus button and then I will be defining a caching strategy. Here you can see we have option to have our own object store, but for now we will not be using object store and we will be using in memory object store. And for the key expression, what I want to do, I want to specify which key, but which particular key it should be considered for the caching. Because uh, for the caching, it uses a hash map with the key value pairs. So uh, if I specify a certain key, then for that key, if there is already a request made to the backend API, subsequently, if we have same requests for the same, uh, uh, for the same key, it will be entertaining those requests from the cache instead of calling the backend API. So I will write here, attributes dot URI params dot UID because that's the name of the URI parameter. So for the same UID, for the same UID URI parameter, it will be uh, entertaining the request from the cache instead of calling the backend API. All right, so we are not going to add anything fancy. We are not going to add any filters. So right now what we did is that we have added the caching as well. So now let me clear the console as it's already loaded. So the changes, it will be refreshed and the new changes will be automatically deployed. Let me clear the console. Okay, so now I want to call this for the ID five. So I will use localhost call on AZOE2 slash caching, caching slash five. So if I click this, now it's calling the actual backend API and we got the response. So if you see here and if you ob observe the console, we can see that in the logs we have before caching, then we have the actual payload, which is uh, printed here from within the cache scope, and then we have after caching. Now, if I hit the same API with the same parameter second time, you see that we quickly got the response because it is entertained from the cache. Now you can see it is before caching and after caching. So actually it did not go inside the cache scope. I mean, it did not call the actual API because it's entertaining from the cache itself. So this logger, which is printing the payload, did not get executed and this request also did not get executed because the data was already there in the cache. So if I try it multiple times, you will see that it will continue. Of course, uh, in this scenario, we don't have any time to live our expiration as specified because we did not use uh, object store separately. But in general, in the real scenarios, you will be using the object store and you will be configuring the time to live expiry as well so that you don't get in, uh, this, you don't uh, return the data to the client from some invalid cache. And depending on your use case, depending on your API or depending on your backend data, which is either in the database or in some other API, you can define that what kind of uh, time to live or expiration should be configured. So now if I try another uh, ID, for example, if I try six, which is a different one, you can see it is taking time because it's calling the actual backend API. We got the response. And if you go to console, we should have this data printed as well. So yeah, we can see that the data for the ID six has been printed because this time it went to the actual backend. And if I try again for this ID six, 
now we quickly got the response because it did not go to the back end rather the response has been received from the uh, from the uh, in memory cache so that's it from this uh, simple yet quite useful uh, tutorial and i'm sure that it will be helpful for you to understand the basics and the power of uh, the cache scope that is provided by mule4 and uh, you can further play with it you can go ahead uh, and make more changes and try to uh, learn more uh, by using the object stores by playing around with the different configurations that are available and then you will find that it's quite useful and handy whenever you have certain scenarios where you have to uh, entertain the client request in a faster manner with a higher throughput and lower response time so uh, if you need to learn more about uh, MuleSoft uh, and different flows and different options and different features of Mule4, you can refer to other videos in this playlist that I have uploaded. And you can always refer to the official MuleSoft documentation as well for, for, for the information and to gain more knowledge about Mule4. Thank you very much. And uh, if you like this video, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any further questions, you can always write in the comment section. Thanks a lot.